from the comfort of your bed. We will travel this evening to a romance in 1800s Europe, filled with tension and the heartfelt allure between two souls. Hello, welcome to Sleep Stories with Luna Yes. Before we embark on our tale, let's take a moment to get comfortable. It is easy for the brain to want to multitask, drifting into to-do lists, projects, and planning. Tonight, let's try to let that go. Everything you've gotten done today is exactly the right amount. Now, your mind and body need rest and recuperation. Take a deep breath in slowly and fully. Pause for a moment and then let that breath go. Feel the weight of your body supported by your mattress. Your bed quite literally has your back tonight. You are safe and warm. For a moment, let's imagine a mug of hot chocolate. On a stove top, milk is heating. Think about which type you like best. Maybe it's skim, 2%, whole milk, oat milk, maybe almond. Light tendrils of steam begin to rise from the pot. You pick up a bowl of chocolate chips from the counter and slowly tip it into the milk. Chocolate chips patter softly into the pot. You hear the quiet plink as each one falls into the milk. Stirring with a wooden spoon, the chips begin to lose their defined little mountain peaks. The tip of the spoon makes a quiet swishing sound against the base of the pot. And soon, the chocolate is fully incorporated and melted. You select your favorite mug Maybe it's white or blue or red. You carefully pour your hot chocolate into your mug. Steam rising from the chocolate as it heats the mug around it. You now add your favorite toppings. Perhaps a dollop of whipped cream. Many marshmallows piled as high as you can make them. Perhaps a sprinkling of crushed peppermints or grated cinnamon.
Maybe you add a drizzle of caramel or chocolate sauce or a dusting of powdered sugar. In your hands, your mug is perfectly warm. It's not too hot, just right. As you raise the mug to your lips, your toppings touch your upper lip. The best hot chocolate you've ever had. Rich, decadent, and comforting fills you with a toasty sensation. Like holding your hands before a fire on a cold winter's day or receiving a big hug. You feel this loving warmth in your chest, spreading throughout your entire body. From the crown of your head to the very tips of your toes, this healing warmth fills you fully and evenly. With one last deep breath, you settle into this warmth. With this comfort available to you all night long, your body is ready to drift into sleep whenever the time is right. And we will now begin our story. At the turn of the 19th century, there lay a small European town on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean named Beckinsdale. Beckinsdale was a town built on fishing and trade. It became a port where people from all over the world could come and trade goods from their home countries. The town's people of Beckinsale were worldly people. Though few of them ever left the town, they spent much of their time chatting with travelers and hearing the adventures each traveler brought along. From these traveling traders, the townspeople learned of what life was like in other countries and on other continents. They tried the exotic foods the travelers brought with them. And in return, they shared their trout, salmon, and mussels. In every tavern of the little town, one could walk down a cobblestone street and find strangers telling tales of their adventures, waving pints of beer or tins of coffee around as they described dangerous foes and miraculous escapes. One day, a gentleman walked into the Seabreeze Tavern. He was unlike any man the townsfolk had ever seen. The man was tall and slender. And despite his knowledge of sailing, he looked as though he had never had his skin burned by a glaring ocean sun.
nor had his hands been calloused by the sharp hairs of the rope. In fact, it looked as though the man were painted noblemen, too beautiful to be believed. His hair was dark and smooth, and his teeth gleamed whiter than the pearls they sometimes found when prying open clams. Though his beauty naturally made the gentleman stand out when he entered the pub that day. What was perhaps more surprising were his manners. Far from the boisterous sea shanty singing men who were regulars at the tavern, this man took a seat in the corner and sat up straight as he pulled a leather-bound notebook from his bag. The woman minding the bar, Meredith, stopped polishing a stein and stole the longest glances she dared. Taking in this curious traveler, Meredith was the owner's daughter and had begun working at the Seabreeze Tavern since she could first sweep a floor and wipe down a table. The Seabreeze was a pivotal key to Meredith's education growing up. It was from the travelers that she learned of the world beyond their town. The travelers taught her the songs sung below deck and words from languages horizons away. From time to time, travelers gave her novels they had finished. Droplets of seawater having warped the pages of each book into waves of their own. This little system of trade, book for book, was one of the greatest pleasures of Meredith's life. Her father had taught her to read during the slow afternoon hours in the bar. And Meredith absorbed each lesson eagerly. By the time she came of age, Meredith was jokingly known about the town as the librarian. Anyone who brought a book knew they could trade one with Meredith. And if they wished, spend an hour discussing characters and betrayals over a drink while she worked. Though this tradition flourished at the Seabreeze Tavern, what did not often happen was writing itself. The curious gentleman in the corner wrote with a fountain pen, often pausing to dip its point into a well of ink. and tapping it lightly against the rim before returning to his page. From behind the bar, Meredith could not read what he wrote, but she could see his handwriting. It was careful, yet flowing. Each word was written with intention and care. Though the other patrons of the sea breeze had stopped to size up the unusual, handsome gentleman, 
It lasted no more than a moment or two before they returned to their drinks and conversations. Meredith, however, seemed almost consumed entirely. Setting down the polished glass and her rag, Meredith unconsciously tucked her curls out of her face and behind her ears. Walking to the corner of the bar, Meredith stopped before the man's table. May I get you something to drink, sir? The gentleman paused his writing mid-sentence and looked up at the woman before him. Either a second or a lifetime passed before he spoke. Wine, please, if you have it. His voice rolled over her like the early rays of sunrise. As if her eyes hadn't been able to see the world just moments before. I think we have a bottle of red in the back. She smiled at him without planning to. Lovely, he said, smiling back. If I may, I would also enjoy some company. The fact that this sentence came from his mouth seemed to surprise him. He continued, I've been traveling on my own for quite some time. A friendly face would be a kind comfort. He looked up at her without bashfulness. Eyes revealing little, but inviting her in all the same. Meredith glanced around the tavern, checking to see that customers seemed well cared for. She prepared herself to look at him again with a flutter inside her stomach. I think that can be managed. Dusting off a bottle from the back, she returned with two glasses. The gentleman rose from his seat and pulled hers out, guiding her graciously to join him. Though she knew this mannered gesture from the books, a man had never welcomed her as something to be treasured before. Meredith tried not to act surprised by the moment as the man returned to his seat. Before closing his notebook, Meredith felt sure she could see the word vampire written in his cascading script. She had read of such creatures before and heard tales of encounters whispered by sailors recently returned to shore. But she had never encountered one herself. Though it 
appeared to be a diary. Perhaps she was mistaken. She must be mistaken, she thought. As these ideas raced through her mind, she noticed that she felt no fear. The man returned to his seat and uncorked the bottle. Letting it breathe for a moment before pouring them each a glass. I feel I've been rude in my eagerness. What is your name, miss? He looked up at her intently. Placing the bottle beside him. Not at all, sir, she smiled. Meredith, Lawrence. It is quite a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Miss Lawrence. The man's eyes gleamed. His amber irises like pools of honey. Meredith felt she could fall into. The man introduced himself as Lennox Alexander. And thus the two passed the afternoon sharing stories of their lives. Lennox was vague about his origins, but was happy to answer Meredith's questions of the world. He had traveled vastly and had diligently recorded each trip. So are you a writer then, Meredith ventured, thinking to the dangerous word she had spied as she sat down. Alas, no, I simply journal my days. I find it is the best way to keep memories alive. Though some part of her knew before she had asked, Meredith let the knowledge sink in. Part of her wondered if he had meant for her to glimpse his page, perhaps testing her courage. With each minute in his company, Meredith found Lennox all the more compelling. He loved her nickname as the librarian and asked if she had ever considered opening one herself. No, she smiled. But I had considered teaching one day. The children of Beckinsdale deserve proper educations. I was lucky to have my father, but most children don't receive such luck. Lennox seemed entranced by this idea. At his request, she agreed to meet him after the bar closed that evening. After the final patrons stumbled home to their beds, Meredith walked into the crisp evening to find Lennox waiting patiently for her. Beneath a street lamp. 
His pale skin seemed to glow in the moonlight. And he kindly offered his arm. Every atom of her body abuzz. Meredith placed her arm around his. And the two strolled Beckinsdale together. They could hear the sound of ocean waves lapping up against docks and boats nearby. Making a steady rhythm in the night air. The town had never looked as beautiful as it did to Meredith that night. Eventually, they came to the end of a cobbled street to a worn down building in disrepair. As you know, this used to be a bakery many years ago, Linux said. This afternoon, I purchased this building. Slowly, he pulled out a velvet bag and placed it into Meredith's hand. It was soft and heavy. Filled to the brim with coins. This building is now yours. Lennox smiled at Meredith's surprise. Please, open your school. Though she insisted it was too large a gift, she finally agreed to accept his donation, only if he would stay to help her build the school and teach alongside her. He thought for a moment before giving his word. Having done so, he looked at her with more adoration than she had felt in her entire life. At her core, she knew he wasn't human. But she also knew she had fallen for him. He alone held her heart, and Meredith wouldn't have it any other way. I hope this love story has been helpful on your journey into rest tonight. If you are still awake, please be kind to yourself. There is never a need to rush into sleep. You will find it when your body is ready on its own time. In the meantime, feel free to check out our other content. We have other sleep stories for you to enjoy, as well as other videos on sleep meditation and sleep hypnosis if you'd like to try something new. For more Luna Yes sleep stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sweet dreams.